the peer review process during publishing versus third party testing, two completely separate subject matters. Yet somehow while we're in Dallas doing these events and talking to amazing people, this subject matter is intermingled into one. Let me tell you what this means. So the peer review process is an amazing process that involves the review of a publication that we're trying to put into a medical journal that goes public. Here's the cool thing. We may generate a series of experiments that tell an amazing story about the mechanism to the genomic and proteomic level for a drug, whether it's natural medicine, whether there's a pharmaceutical drug. And once we tell the story in the form of a research paper conveying and displaying our data, p-value, significance, and the methodologies, what we do is we have to have that paper peer reviewed before it's really valuable in the marketplace or in the scientific uh, community. And what that means is the journal that's going to publish our paper will have a panel of PhDs and or MDs and they review your data, they review your results, they even review how you interpret those results. And sometimes, most of the times, these people are specialized in their own channels specific mechanisms, specific activities, specific pathologies and disease and treatment of disease. And so what happens is we then offer our paper, our finished paper with all the scientific references, with all our experimental data, and they review it. Sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it takes two or three months. And they may ask for more work to be done to clarify some of our interpretations and conclusions. And so when we talk about a peer review process and a peer reviewed uh, publication, it's not just what we've done to establish our rationale and our conclusions, but we have to have them reviewed and approved by the professionals, medical professionals, PhDs, on the panel of the peer review uh, journal to allow this publication then to move to a public domain. So this is called the peer review process. And oftentimes it's very frustrating for us because we have our conclusions, but you're offering your paper to a professional who may have more experience in an area of expertise that is not ours, and then he'll say, wait a minute, how do you come to the conclusion that you're inhibiting this kinase or this subcellular protein and jumping this other kinase that might be medial in a pathway? And because he's an expert in that field, he knows there's a second kinase that we then need to study. He said, go back to the bench, show me that that kinase is not involved or is involved, and then we'll do that. So you can see a peer review process is quite expansive, especially in a good journal, to review and validate your results and conclusions. Now, in the context of our ketone, ketoba, BHB, BA, and many of our other compounds, our curcuminoid, curcumin biobdm C, our glyvia, and others that you're going to see coming shortly, these have been researched, published through peer-reviewed journals. So it's not just our message that we're delivering, but it's validated by independent parties that want to make sure their credibility is strong because they've allowed our, pub our published paper to be published in their journal. Now, the second factor that we talked about in Dallas that was quite commonly asked is third-party testing. It's a different context. We third-party test our finished products and all of the ingredients that come in to make these products that you consume. Third-party testing means that yes, we test it in our lab, but we also test it in an independent lab, a third-party lab that's not us, to have them validate that we are meeting label claim and that there's no toxicity in the products. That's the nature of the third-party testing versus the peer review process. The peer review process validates your pharmacology and the method by which you achieve an understanding of that pharmacology versus a third-party testing test the label claim and the finished product to make sure it fits the activity you're trying to achieve, then to achieve the pharmacological activity you're showing, showcasing in your published paper. That's the difference.